All right. The story of Burnt Nial, Chapter 2. Fruit Woos Una. It happened once that those brothers, house schooled in Fruit, rode to the All Thing, and there was much people at it. Then house schooled said to Fruit, One thing I wish, brother, and that is that thou wouldst better thy lot and woo thyself a wife. Fruit answered, That has been long on my mind, though there always seem to be two sides to the matter. But now I will do as thou wishest. Whither shall we turn our eyes? House schooled answered, Here now are many chiefs at the thing, and there is plenty of choice. But I have already set my eyes on a spot where a match lies made to thy hand. The woman's name is Una, and she is a daughter of Fiddle Mord, one of the wisest of men. He is here at the thing, and his daughter too, and thou, and thou mayest see her if it pleases thee. Now the next day, when men were going to the high court, they saw some well-dressed women standing outside the booths of the men from, from the wrong river vales. Then Housegold said to Fruit, Yonder now is Una, of whom I spoke. What thinkest thou of her? Well, answered Fruit, but yet I do not know whether we should get on well together. After that they went to the high court, where Fiddle Mord was laying down the law as was his wont, and after he and after he had done he went home to his booth. Then House Gould and Fruit rose, and went to Mord's booth. They went in and found Mord sitting in the innermost part of the booth, and they bade him good day. He rose to meet him to, he rose to meet them, and took House Gould by the hand, and made him sit down by his side, and Fruit sat next to House Gould. So after they had talked much of this and that, at last Housegold said, I have a bargain to speak to thee about. Fruit wishes to become thy son-in-law, and buy thy daughter, and I, for my part, will not be sparing in the matter. Mord answered, I know that thou art a great chief, but thy brother is unknown to me. He is a better man than I, answered Housegold. Thou wilt need to lay down a large sum with him. For she is heir to all I leave behind me, said Mord. There is no need, said Housegold, to wait long before thou hearest what I give my There is no need, said Housegold, to wait long before thou hearest what I give my word thy shall have. He shall have Camnus and Hrutstead, and up as far as Throndargil, and a trading ship beside now on her voyage. Then said Hrut to Mord, Bear in mind now, husband that my brother has praised me much more than I deserve for love's sake. But if after what thou hast heard thou wilt make the match, I am willing to let thee lay down the terms thyself. Mord answered, I have thought over the terms. She shall have sixty hundred, hundreds down, and this sum shall be increased by a third more in, in thine house. But if ye two have heirs, ye shall go halves in the goods. Then said Hrut, I agree to these terms, and now let us take witness. After that they stood up and shook hands, and Mord betrothed his daughter Una to Hrut, and the bridal feast was to be at Mord's house, half a month after midsummer. Now both sides ride home from the thing, and Hauskuld and Hrut ride westward by Halbjorn's beacon. Then Theostolf, the son of Bjorn Gulbera of, Re of Reich Riverdale, rode to meet them and told them how a ship had come out from Norway to the White River, and how aboard of her was Alzor, Hrut's father's brother, and he wished Hrut to come to him as soon as ever he could. When Hrut heard this, he asked Hauskuld to go with him to the ship, so Hauskuld went with his brother, and when they reached the ship, Hrut gave his kinsman Alzor a kind and hearty welcome. Alzor asked them into his booth to drink, so their horses were unsaddled, and they went in and drank. And while they were drinking, Hrut said to Alzer, Now, kinsman, thou must ride west with me, and stay with me this winter. That cannot be, kinsman, for I have to tell thee the death of thy brother Ivand, and he has left thee his heir at the Gula, at the Gula thing, and now thy foes will seize thy heritage unless thou comest to claim it. What's to be done now, brother, said Hrut to Hauskuld? For this seems a hard matter, coming just as I have fixed my bridal day. Thou must ride south, said Hauskuld, and see Mord, and ask him to change the bargain which ye two have made, 
to let his daughter sit for three winters as thy betrothed, but I will ride home and bring down thy wares to the ship. Then said Hrut, My wish is that thou shouldest take meal and timber, and whatever else, else thou needest out of the lading. So Hrut had his horses brought out, and he rode south, and while Hauskuld rode home west, Hrut came east to the wrong Riverdales to Mord, and had a good welcome, and he told Mord all his business, and asked his advice what he should do. How much money is this heritage? asked Mord, and Hrut said it would come to a hundred marks if he got it all. Well, said Mord, that is much when set against what I shall leave behind me, and thou shalt go for it, if thou wilt. After that they broke their bargain, and Una was to sit waiting for Hrut three years as his betrothed. Now Hrut rides back to the ship, and stays by her during the summer, till she was ready to sail, and Hauskuld brought down all Hrut's wares and money to the ship, and Hrut placed all his other property in Hauskuld's hands to keep for him while he was away. Then Hauskuld rode home to his house, and a little while after they got a fair wind and sail away to sea. They were out three weeks, and the first land they made was Hearn, near Bergen, and so sail eastward to the bay.